He said, whatever I have to say, he's already said. So there isn't much that I have to say. So I'll be short, brief, you know. I'll save uh, Renki a lot of trouble. Also, I'm looking at the watch, so I won't take too much time. And leave the issue uh, for James, who then gets, for perhaps, you know, whatever Evan hasn't covered, which hopefully is what he will speak on. You see, I think the issue of commons is in some sense wrongly understood when we talk about something which is happening, which is new, which has come from software, and so on. It is important for us to really understand that commons is how we really started. If you look at how hunting was done, well, it was done as commons. How was agriculture done? Food gathering done? It was done as commons. In fact, the history of society is actually enclosing the commons more and more. This is the history of society that we have at today. And it is rediscovery of the commons that we are talking about today. If you look at it, first private property appears. Before that, you had communally owned forests. You didn't actually own forests at all. You just gathered from the forest. You start agriculture, the concept of private property in land arises, but the first land is really community owned. It's only later you start talking about private, and private property in land, which is then carried over generation to generation. At the same time, there are always commons. Commons, which is what you resorted to, both to gather from the commons, also, in terms of nat calamities, natural disasters that took place, commons was a reservoir from which society drew in order to survive. What <coughs> happened 16th, 17th, 18th century onwards is that this commons, which was commonly village land, commonly owned village land, communally owned forest lands, this starts disappearing. And you also get, for instance, with coming in of the British, you start getting rights of the forest become now devolved on the crown. The Britain, British laws made forest is owned by the, by the crown, but it's owned by the state. It's no longer that people have rights in the forest. So effectively, you also enclose the forest, not for private appropriation at that point, but for state appropriation. So if you really look at this history, we must understand that physical terms, the commons has been there. It's actually, it's last 200, 300 years of history that commons has almost disappeared in that sense. And what we now have are actually state-created uh, enclosures in which public has rights, but at least as public goods of some kind or the other. But really, commons as it existed has really almost disappeared. And that also creates a problem that what do people then do in terms of if they don't have a job, they don't have livelihood, what do, what, do, what do people do? And therefore, the concept of a welfare state is to recreate what the commons did in an earlier era, which is really to have certain set of things outside private property, which then poor people, in terms of distress, could resort to. So that is one part of it. The second part of it, I would like to also tell you, as address this issue, that knowledge, science, was always in public domain till now. It's only recently talk about science being enclosed, algorithms being now sought to be patented and so on. This is, recent, this is absolutely a recent phenomena. Otherwise, the model of software development we've talked of is the classical scientific knowledge generation. This is how we always generated knowledge. It was supposed to be free. It was supposed to be outside the boundary of private appropriation, and it was almost entirely, quote unquote, a socialist model of creating science, because it's always paid by somebody or the other. And the university researcher or the scientist wasn't looking for money for developing a great paper. They were looking for recognition of different kinds. So this has been the model. So we should think that commons is something we are creating anew. We are really looking at much older foundations of the commons, reclaiming the commons, because private property, as it was created, has really appears to have reached the limits of what human society can bear. And certainly for knowledge creation, we see that this is really something which stands against creation. I 
I just wanted to focus on one particular poem. This is really came out in Britain out of the fight for commons. The hang the this is something that of course I haven't discovered. It's been there. The other people who've written about commons has put this point out. I always think it's a very good one. The hang the man and flog the woman that steals the goose from the commons. But let the greater villain lose who steals the commons from the goose. So effectively, what we are seeing is in science today and technology, we are seeing the commons being stolen from the goose. So this is really the issue today. It is not that we are trying to create something new. It's also the loss of what exists that we are fighting against. Now, in a, in a very fundamental sense, it is the coming together of science and technology as it happens in information technology and in life sciences that we are getting this threat of the new enclosure movement. Let me be very clear. The, even today, mathematicians do not <coughs> patent, are not looking at patenting, are not looking at various other things. They still are trying to solve problems in mathematics without concern who is going to benefit, who is going to get the money out of it. In fact, one of the persons who solved one of those clays mathematical problems with the Clay Institute said they'll give one million dollars if somebody can solve the problem, provided it is published in a journal, peer-reviewed journal. The Russian mathematician who discovered it, therefore did not publish it in any journal. The Clay Institute gave him the prize in spite of that. He said he doesn't want that money. He also refused the Fields Medal. But that apart, the basic thing is that even today, the major scientific <laughs> disciplines today are not the ones who are talking about patent. They're not the ones who are talking about making money. I mean, I just imagine, what would Stephen Hawking patent for finding out how the Big Bang took place? I mean, very difficult to patent Big Bang, right? So in, in that sense, the major, I would say the most important discoveries that we see in science today, even today, are not quote unquote patented. So what are we really talking about is really certain areas in science where technology and science seem to be very close together. And this is really life sciences, genetics, material sciences, biochemistry, chemistry in an earlier era more than today. And of course, information technology as it is called, which I really don't know what it is because you know it sort of has a very large rubric. Information, I understand. Technology, I understand. But anyway, assuming these are descriptive terms, we have some idea of what they are. This is really what we're talking about today. So this is, to my mind, a new enclosure movement <coughs> because it seeks to expand the boundary of what existed earlier. So effectively, this whole issue that starts, and it is correct, as Mishi and <coughs> others have spoken in the morning, it starts in the United States of trying to expand the boundary of what is patentable, which was a device given as much for discub as much for public disclosure as it was for monopoly, which is what the patent system was all about initially. But it was also the expansion of the system to cover more and more areas which is not earlier, were not patentable. Unfortunately, the Indians haven't played a very good role at the, on this because the major uh, life sciences patent was Deer versus Chakravarti, an Indian who wanted to patent a life form uh, from Bengal. I come from the same state. And the second one also coming from the state, but the second speaker is going to speak from Mr. We saw in the morning, he comes from Kerala. So Alapet is a turning point of law. So the two really bad examples of enclosures. Both have Indians asking for the enclosure. 